Okay, so let's get this thing on me. And welcome, sports fans. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of This Week in Sports, brought to you by www.sports-kings.com. I'm Andy. I'm your host today. Along with me, I have Joe from Sports Kings. Don't forget the dash in Sports Kings. Do not forget the dash. I don't know where you'll go, but it'll be an awful time. And we have Michael from Sports Dash Kings. He didn't forget to dash this time. What's up, guys? <laughs> now, you'll see me. I'll refer to it as Sports Kings often. But, yes, it, it's Sports Dash Kings when you're searching. You can uh, go to that the website. I gave you the URL address. Or you can find us on Facebook at the same thing, Sports Dash Kings. Hit that like button and give us some conversation. We're going to have a good show for you today. This is the show where we kind of dive into all sorts of uh, aspects of the sporting world. We're going to start with probably, you know, the biggest news of the week, easily the biggest news of the week, and that's uh, the All-American defensive lineman from the University of Missouri, and that is Michael Sam coming out of the closet openly uh, being gay. Uh, and, you know, I don't think it's so crazy because – you know, I I knew that there were there were gay football players out there. It's just it was a matter of time before this happened. But you know, this is kind of shocked the world right now. Um, a real quick, a little bit about Michael. Michael, uh, I've been seeing a projected Joe. You're actually one of our draft guys, so we'll we'll let you light this up a little bit. I've been seeing him projected anywhere between like the third and fifth round. Um, the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. He did have 48 tackles in 2013 with 11 and a half sacks. So, actually, let me give you a quote real quick because I like this. He's, this. This is quoted right from Michael Sam. He said, I came to tell the world I'm an openly uh, proud gay man. Uh, there's been some backlash from a few players. Some players have supported it. You know, the usual hoopla that we would expect. Let's go to you first, Joe. What's your take on this? Well, my, well he, he, Sam also told his Missouri teammates back in August before this whole season started. Yes, and he, and he wanted to come out, stuff. right, so that it wouldn't so, get twisted. So the, the fact that he was able to have such a successful senior year at Missouri after telling that to his teammates really shows that he had a group there that was it made an environment conducive to you know, him being successful. And I think that's going to be really key wherever he goes in the NFL. Um, like you were saying with the draft, yeah, he's you know third, fourth round, early day three guy. He's... Six foot two, two hundred and sixty pounds, real good pass rusher. Um, he's a guy that could fit, you know, as a situational guy, maybe three, four outside linebacker. But he's a guy that on the field can definitely help a lot of teams out there. Yeah, and that's actually uh, a good point. I, I failed to mention the the part about, you know, his team knowing and that was kind of you know, what I was reading yesterday was the fact that uh, Michael, you know, he, he made a smart move. He wanted to get ahead of this thing before the media, you know, was the one to break it rather than him. Michael. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, more power to the guy. If he's happy, he's happy. Great. Good for him. I just hope that wherever he goes, it doesn't turn into some sort of media firestorm because that's all this guy does not need. He doesn't need to be the poster boy for somebody's, you know, political agenda. He wants to play football, whether he's gay, straight, you know, whatever. That's, that's you know, his business, his prerogative. He's uh, he does need to go to I think he does really need to go to a team that runs the three four, um, and a team that's going to handle this situation. San Diego day three watch if they get a hold of Michael Sam they will be able to I think they'll be able to handle this situation, the same way they did the Manti Teo scandal after all that happened. In fact, Sam's agent actually said he really hopes that Sam goes to San Diego because of the way that they handled the Teo scandal. And it seemed to work out for Teo, even though he had that injured foot. You never really heard much about it, um, about the scandal after that. Richie, the, the thing that really surprised me about the whole thing, Richie Incognito, the NFL's quote-unquote monster, uh, he supports this, which is uh, which I found pretty cool. Um, maybe, you know, Richie Incognito's not such a bad guy after all. Yeah, and I don't know if anybody read that in-depth text that was just pages and pages of, like, you know, weeks of uh, Richie and uh, Richie's texts, and it was you know it was kind of eye opening. But that's you know another story for another time. Uh, him and him and Jonathan Martin had that that long exchange there that really made it seem like incognito, kind of you know like a childish dude, but really not like a, the bigot he was portrayed to be in the media. 
my my thoughts were, and actually you talked about the Manti Teo thing, and that was fun. The only time I really I saw Manti really get it was when they played the Raiders. I think they were holding up signs. The fans that said something about uh, they were they were mourning the loss <laughs> of uh, his his girlfriend. There, I don't even want to. I, I think I think my favorite one, Andy. I was watching the same thing. There was a guy holding up a sign. And he had an empty seat beside him, and he said it said something like Manti's gr- Manti Teo's gr- or reserve seat for Manti Teo's girlfriend or something. No, and apparently but, yes. like a sign. but I mean, I can understand that since there's nobody hardly in the Oakland Coliseum. You know, I mean, it's it's Oakland. What do you expect? Okay. There's not going to be anybody showing up to watch those games anyway. Shout out, to, <laughs> shout out to Justin and Jason from Sports Games. Yeah. Um, so you know, my thoughts on on this were outside of the football aspect, because you guys you know talked about the good fit for him. There is. The San Diego thing that Michael talked about is what I was saying yesterday to people in conversation. I feel like he needs to go somewhere that's not New York or, you know, not a large market. He needs to go somewhere where the media is not going to make a circus of this, one of those lower key teams. And maybe like a San Diego is a good fit, something to that extent. Um, it's got to be about football and not about, you know, Michael Sam is gay. I, I just, I, I feel like. Either way, this is going to be blown up, but I, yeah, you know, the, the right situation is going to be the key for him. Michael. And if he, you know, let's say he does go to a small market team, um, I don't want to use these guys in this situation, but let's say he does, you know, end up in a Jacksonville or something like that. I just yep. hope that whoever drafts him, and, you know, this is kind of to reiterate the point, doesn't use him as a marketing tool yes. like they did with Tim Tebow. Yes. Tim Tebow as a first round pick was a joke. Mel Kuyper Jr. had him in like a day two, day three, early, late at the earliest, late day two, early day three. Then Josh McDaniels takes him in the first round and puts fans in the stands in Denver. Please, for the love of God, do not do this to Michael Sam. This is not what this kid needs. Exactly. Uh, and Joe, you had a thought. Actually, if, if you guys hop over to our Sports Kings football site down in distance, you'll see our list of my top five NFL fits for Michael Sam. And actually the top team Great I Great read, by the way. Was, Great read. Thank you. And... Honestly, the, the top team I think you could go to, you want, you want to talk about a team that's a strong organization, that's not a huge media market, and that ha- has a reputation for developing middle-round defensive players into stars, Pittsburgh Steelers. I mean, that's, you know, to me that makes a heck of a lot of sense. Organization first in Pittsburgh. So let's jump right into our, our next topic here, and this is kind of another scandalous topic. Yeah, we're, we're giving it to you guys this week with the, with the scandals. Marcus Smart... Uh, guard out of Oklahoma State. I don't want to say he went into the stands, and I made this mistake on Facebook the other day. I I was saying, bottom line, you can't go into the stands as a basketball player. He didn't really go into the stands. He was uh, attempting to block a shot and fell into the stands. When he got up, he was met by the idiot, Jeff Orr. And, yes, I'm calling you an idiot, the Texas Tech fan who stood there. He has a history of this crap. Uh and he said something. It's very unclear what was actually said. Some uh, some of the reports are that it was racially driven. Uh, some things were along the lines of saying you're trash or you're garbage or et cetera. Either way, I, out of bounds by this fan. Uh, but Smart, you know, kind of pulls the ultimate bonehead move and he, he loses his head a little bit and, and shoves the fan with two hands, which, you know, one thing people really weren't talking about and I understand, you know, people are going to jump on the fact that, oh, America's weak and America this and that, too picky. But, like, technically, that that's assault. Like, you can't do that. I, for me, the only thing Marcus Smart does and, and uh, did by shoving this fan, Jeff Orr, was he's hurting himself. He could be hurting his draft stock. Now, I don't think there's any scenario where he falls out of the lottery. He's just too good of a player. But some teams are going to be cautious of this type of move. Smart's a hell of a player. But, I mean, shoving the fan, I, I don't know. Guys, how do, how do you feel about this? We'll go to you first, Michael. Marcus Smart pushing the fan. Your thoughts? Well, I think we just found the Richard Sherman of the NCAA. Um, you know, you can argue that Marcus Smart, you know, had the whole, oh, he got, you know, in the heat of the moment and all this other stuff. But when you put on whatever jersey you're wearing, let's say, okay, for instance, you're Mark, I'm Marcus Smart. When I put on that Oklahoma State uniform, I'm representing Oklahoma State in every move I make, whether it being a good decision or a bad decision. And the fact that one mistake, by, granted, he's 19 years old, but can you really do that? Can you give use that as an excuse to your 19 years old? No, I don't, I don't think you can right now because you hold these guys at such a high level. 
especially since, you know, he's projected lottery pick. Um, he could have been at least top three last year had he come out. Now there's cases with the flopping and the arguing and all this other stuff. And it's just je- – the, the whole thing has been blown out of proportion by this guy. The three games are justified. Marcus, use your head next time. You're throwing money down the drain. Let me say that again. You're throwing money away. <laughs> All right, Joe, your thoughts on the on the subject here. You know, definitely, I, I echo everything Mike said. You know, as a player for his university, he absolutely has to keep his head in that kind of a situation. Um, you know, you really just can't do that, especially when you have so much draft stock on the line. You decided to go back when he was a probable top 10 pick last year because he wanted to work on his game, and, you know, now something like this happens. You know, how much does that jeopardize him? I think... Beyond anything, you know, the reports of it being, you know, racially motivated or anything, I don't buy any of that. I, I watched the video probably ten times, and it looks like he said something pretty much what he admitted was, you know, calling him a piece of crap. So, but above yeah. all else, you know, Marcus Smart's a college athlete. You know, he's getting tons of money from the university to go to school. you got to keep your head on. See, for me, it was like, and, and I got into a big war with people on Facebook about this the other day. I, I'm not so much mad that Marcus Smart reacted the way he did because I'll be the first one to say, you know, I, I played, I played sports my whole life. Oh, and absolutely. I, yeah. I, you know, I kind of am the type of person who, you know, you say something like that to me, and I may react in a similar way. Um, you know, it's hard to control in the heat of the moment, like Michael brought up. But the thing is, is what I broke down for people on social media the other day is either you can. Go be in the audience and shove a fan. I don't want to say go into the audience again. I almost did. You can either shove a fan or you can't. Like, that's the bottom line for me. It's it's a yes or a no, true or a false answer. And if, you know, if you come to the conclusion that you can't, then no matter what was said, Marcus Smart's wrong. And that's my whole thing. I love Marcus Smart. Like, Mark, I'm an Orlando Magic fan. Marcus Smart is, you know, my top two or three guys that I would love to have in Orlando on uh, this co- upcoming draft, and it's, it's a possibility. But I know some GMs, some organizations are, are going to be very careful about this situation now. And Michael brought up the other things. It's not just the shove. It's the flopping. It's the complaining. It's, it seems like he's having a bad attitude lately, and that's going to roll up into a ball. And, you know, some of these organizations, Rob Hennigan, uh, the general manager for Orlando, is one of these guys who said he doesn't want me players. He wants team players. He wants a cohesive unit. And I just I feel like Marcus Smart's hurting himself in that aspect, and that's why I felt he was wrong because he's yeah, hurting yeah, himself. Yeah, yeah, th- yeah. This whole incident definitely reeks of me player. Yes, and yes. Whole, and and let's not, you know, get off topic here a little bit. Had this happened without the Palace at Auburn Hills incident, I think this would have been an even bigger spectacle because this, you know, ever since the Palace at Auburn Hills. Hadn't really happened. Then this blows up. Then you know this whole thing happens, and everybody's like, "Oh, this is gonna, you know, it's another yep. one." No, this happens. This has happened in hockey before, and nobody cares. Uh, I can recall 2006. Well. There's um, a guy named Kip Brennan who is a career minor leaguer, career goon. He's retired now. God bless this guy. He was a fan favorite. Real nice guy too. I had the pleasure of meeting this guy. Crawl gets up out of the penalty box. Crawls over the glass. And proceeds to beat the crap out of some guy from Man- that that lives in Manchester, and everybody was cheering. It's great. It's a YouTube. It was a YouTube sensation. You know, I mean, and he's like, he was 27, 28 at the time, so that was a more rational thought. And then, you know, not so much heat of the moment. But I guess one phrase is, when does the heat of the moment stop being an excuse? When can you know? I mean, Marcus Smart manned up to it. He said, you know, look, I'm sorry. I take responsibility for this, which I thought was a pretty cool move. Might have helped him out a little bit. I'm not sure if that's you know something that his coach may have told him to do or if he legitimately did it. But when does the term heat of the moment stop being an excuse? Yeah, and honestly, when does if rational I, thought kick in? If I, if I can hop in here, honestly, I'm very much of the opinion, you know, maybe we do, maybe we do hold these, you know, professional and upcoming professional athletes to too high of a standard. But at this day and age, the heat, you know, with social media and all that stuff, how news spreads so quickly. The heat of the moment never stops being an excuse, really. Yeah, especially when the hoodie and the Patriots with their cameras, everything's taped, guys. I mean, you, yeah, you've got to understand exactly. that somebody, you know, people see these things from multiple angles, and I, I just, I, I wish Marcus Smart the best. I hope it doesn't kill his draft stock, uh, but 
ultimately, I feel like, you know, one now what happens if, if one more thing happens? I mean, it's, it's just... It's like a, a big snowball just getting momentum going down. The exactly. Deck. Now he's, people he's are watching to come and waiting out, for he's him. He's got to come out the next game after his suspension, put all of this behind him, and say, I'm going to do nothing but look forward, keep my eye on the prize, and that is to become not only an NBA player, but to be the best NBA player that I can be and to prove people that I'm not just some, you know, dare I say thug who made a bad decision. Don't say thug. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't say fuck. What you know the the one thing sure I think that'll help Marcus Smart is is have a good rest of the season, have a good March, have a great turn. Exactly. Because yep. people forgive when you win or when you do well. I mean, so oh, if he if he improves his stock playing wise going into the draft, that might be all that matters. So I think and we spent enough to, time. If on, he has to come back for one more year, by all means, do it to prove he's not, these people wrong. He's not coming back for one more year. Let's let's jump uh, right yeah, in from, from college hoops to the NBA, and this is our next topic. This was probably the biggest news in the NBA this week or the past couple of days. Maurice Cheeks, head coach of the Detroit Pistons, is no more in Motor City. Uh, they fired him after a 21 and 29 start to the season, which you know, for all intents and purposes, is is well under where the Pistons and their fans felt they would be this year. Uh, you know, bringing in Josh Smith, the development of Greg Monroe and Andre Drummond, bringing in um, Brandon Jennings, bringing back Chauncey Billups. I feel like the expectations in Motor City this year for the Pistons were pretty high, and I, you know, I never really thought that they were going to quite live up to those uh, to the to the height of those expectations, and they're not right now. Let's let's talk about that, and then actually, I kind of have a, a to this question a little bit, Ooh, but let's curveball. let's go with you, let's All go with right. you first, Joe. What are your thoughts on this fair or foul with the the Mo Cheeks firing? You know, I'm never a fan in any sport of coaches getting fired after one year. We saw with Rob Chudzinski in Cleveland a few months ago. You know, they, they acquired a lot of guys in the off season. They picked up Brandon Jennings to send Brandon Knight to Milwaukee. They got Josh Smith, which was a huge signing in free agency. But I look, I look at their roster, and I feel like they just have a lot of players where it just doesn't really fit together in the conventional way that you would expect an, an NBA team to do. And, you know, for a guy to, you know, give, give Mo Cheeks 50 games and, you know, try to, you know, he only got 21 wins out of it, so obviously that's not good, especially in such a weak Eastern Conference. But, you know, I think you give him at least a full year, you know, see if he can turn it around and... You know, take the time to evaluate in the off season. This just reeks as a decision of we want to win right now. Michael, your thoughts? I, I literally feel like Joe just read my mind because before I started prepping, <laughs> I, do, show, I do that a lot. The first thing Watch I said out. was Rob Chudzinski. How do you get fired after a four and eight season with a team that never fit your system? I be, it beats me. You know, I, I liked the moves that Detroit made in the offseason. I thought they were on their way to being contenders. They weren't there yet, but they were on their way to being contenders. Really good young guys, like you mentioned, Greg Monroe, Andre Drummond. Um, and I, I, I'm a huge Brandon Jennings fan. I can I, I seriously believe Brandon Jennings is going to be one of those guys that in the next, you know, three or four years, you're going to be like, wow, why didn't I pay attention to Brandon Jennings? Um, as far as the team itself, I don't think that there was enough veteran presence, though. I mean, yeah, you got Josh Smith. You bring back a guy like Chauncey Billups, but let's face it, Chauncey Billups is coming off of, like, a broken leg, I think it was, a couple years ago. He's way past his prime. Yeah, he, like, blew out his Achilles. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. That's, a Kobe, kind of that's a Kobe injury. You, 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 nothing. Charlie Villanueva. It was the Billups have... injury first. Excuse Don't take me. that away from Chad. Excuse me. <laughs> you know, I I just I think that there was no veteran, no real veteran leadership there, um, and I think that you know Mo Cheeks had the right idea, but if and I, this may even go into your curveball, Andy, with the fans calling for Rashid Wallace, come on, coach. Why are you gonna steal? Why are you gonna steal my thunder on the curveball? Because question? Joe stole mine. <laughs> because Joe fair, stole fair mine. So here we go. I've already got new curveball, so let's see what Andy finds. Oh, I I thought that this would have been a genius marketing idea to put you know butts in the seats, but I don't think basketball wise I would have given it like a, uh, on a scale of one to ten I would have given it a two. Marketing wise, that probably would have been about an eight point five. No, I, I I just Chauncey Bill uh, no. 
Rashid Wallace. Rashid Wallace coaching Detroit would be like Dennis Rodman coaching Chicago. <laughs> All right, my, my thoughts quickly are <clears throat> I, I don't know how many people out there listening really realize this for you guys. Mo Cheeks has, has kind of been all over the place in this league. I, I mean, and by that, I mean he's coached a few places. He, he was a coach in Portland. He was the coach in Philly. And he has a 306 win, 315 loss record as a head coach. I found that interesting. He's, he's only had not two. Not so good teams either. Yeah, but he's only had two winning seasons. I, I mean, the teams in Portland weren't horrible. They, you know, the early 2000s teams. He won 50 games once and he won 49 games once. That was yeah. 2001, 2002, 2002, 2003. And then after that, he broke 500, and then he never had another winning season. And you're right, the Philly teams weren't great. But my thing is, is I'm, I'm kind of the opposite of you two. I didn't really like the moves the Pistons made. I feel like if I'm playing NBA 2K14, that's the roster I build. But if I want to win basketball games, I, I don't bring in Josh Smith and Brandon Jennings. Not on the same team. That, to me, was so crazy because now Josh Smith – as you know, one of your star players is really the the old head or your veteran, I, and I, I just don't like Josh Smith in that role. You have a young Drummond, you have a, a young Greg Monroe. They're both impressionable guys, and they're going to be shooting threes by season's end. They're listening to Josh Smith, and then you know you have Brandon Jennings, and you have Rodney Stuckey, and you have Will Bynum, and you have all these young like tweener guards, and I, I just I never liked it. But my uh, you stole my curveball, so onto the sheet thing. I kind of feel like maybe you just let Sheed coach the rest of the season. Let him be the, the interim coach. I mean, it's not going to happen, but that to me feels like the, the funky twist that they might need because at this point, I don't think they're making a splash in the playoffs if they can even get to the playoffs. So let, let Sheed do it. I mean, maybe Sheed will smack Josh Smith in the mouth. I, I mean, I, I really don't know. Joe, you said you had a curveball. See, Andy, oh, my, we're, we're stealing everybody's curveballs. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it, like you said, it's a very weird construction. It feels like, at least as long as I've been following basketball the last four or five years, that's all the Sacramento Kings have been doing is just throwing random guys together <laughs> hoping it works. NBA 2K. Those GMs but, are playing with the sticks. But as, as I'm looking at the ESPN report right now, they're saying Lionel Hollins as a guy yeah. that could, you know, yeah. that, that's that's exactly that's what they need. They need, a, they, they need a veteran coach and, you know, a guy that knows how to work, some, work with bigs. And you know, he looked down when he was with Memphis. Right. Zach Randolph, Marcus Soule. I mean, you know, that's a, that's the kind of coach that could put these guys to a three, four, five seed in the East behind the Heat and Pacers. That's yeah, I mean, at need. least it's wide open to get into the playoffs at this yeah, point. Exactly. I mean, I don't, An eight I don't think seed is not that. out of reach right now for Detroit. It's really <laughs> yeah. not. They I start, mean, a you know, five seed is not out of reach at this point. I, yeah, anything yeah, yeah, other yeah. than the one or two seed, I, I feel like almost any team in the if, East could grab. If there's still if there's still hope for Jason Whitney's Knicks, there's still hope for Andre Drummond and the Pistons. <laughs> shout out to Jason Whitney right now. But I mean, you know, I think that's his third shout same, out today. <laughs> this is the same Detroit team though, with this new head coach they've got. I forget who their interim coach is, even if they've got the guy now. They beat the Spurs last night by like ten points, I think it was. The Spurs. Who are still a powerhouse yeah. in the Western Conference? So they're this team hurting, has well, they're hurting a little bit. They are hurting a little bit, but they're still a powerhouse in the Western Conference to an extent. This team has talent. They've shown that you know, with the right, you know, coaching or whatever, they can get there. And you know, maybe that is a, a point to help your um, your counterpoint to ours, Andy. That you know, maybe Mo Cheeks wasn't the right man for the job. But I think that you should have let the guy go a whole season. I'm with Joe. I don't like the whole firing. You know, mid. You know, or whatever, unless the team really, really sucks. Yeah, I think my final thought on the Mo Cheeks thing is that you, what you do, what they did in Detroit this year, and it happens all the time in sports, especially in the NBA, because it's easier to say we can win with these four or five guys than it is in you know football or baseball. You, you know, it's more of a team, a team-oriented sport. With basketball, if you bring in a couple of high-profile free agents, you're expected to win games, and that's what Detroit did. Is they brought in Josh Smith and they brought in Brandon Jennings, and for better or worse they were supposed to help this team be a contender in the East. And when it doesn't happen, the coach's head comes off. And that's usually the, the most logical step for these general managers is just the part ways with the head coach. It's, 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 it's more cost effective. I mean, you can't just say, hey, Josh Smith, exactly. I gave you a boatload of money. See you later. So um, our last category, and real quick before we leave the NBA, shout out to the Orlando Magic. They beat the Pacers and the Oklahoma City Thunder last week. Baby, baby. Um, we'll go into 
We'll go into the Washington Redskins making headlines again. Uh, lawmakers, uh, D.C., Congress, these guys are stepping in now, and they want the Washington Redskins to change their name yet again. So we'll start with you, Michael. I know you had a lot to say on this. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about this whole debacle? Oh, my God. Where do I begin? First, quick shout-out, www.sports-kings.com backslash DC Sports Kings. You can read all about this. I personally wrote this. So here we go. Without going to be too political about this because we could do a whole show about this whole ordeal, this is probably the only thing that a Democrat and a Republican can get along with because the, the letter writers were uh, Democratic representative from Washington, Marta Cantwell, She's apparently the like the leader for the uh, yeah Maria that one. Campbell. She's the committee leader for like Indian Affairs or whatever. Yeah, the and Chickasaw Nation. Tom Cole, uh, Republican representative from the great state of Oklahoma. Shout out to Oklahoma. Since we're doing shout outs, apparently this episode shout out to Oklahoma. <laughs> um, is one of only two Native Americans in the House of Representatives, which you know is really cool. Now for the bad news. It's not going to happen, guys. This has been going on since 1937, the name Washington Redskins. It's been in D.C. Actually, excuse me. It's been in D.C. since 1937. This has been going on since 1932. Roger Goodell publicly said in his Super Bowl week press conference, 8 out of 10 people in the United States, they did a poll, 8 out of 10 people in the United States don't want the name changed. They don't really care. Why is this such a hotbed issue when there are, you know, so many other issues that, Congress could be worrying about right now. Dan Snyder, he's not going to change the name. Roger Goodell doesn't want the name changed. And if we're going to change the name of the Watkins, why don't we change the name of the city, the great state of Oklahoma? That means like red people or something in, uh, I believe it's Choctaw. So, I mean, that's like ultimate irony right there. If you're going to change one, change the other, don't change any at all. And that's all I have to say about that. Uh, real quick before we kick this to Joe, um, I wanted to point out, because you talked about the Maria Cantwell and uh, Tom Cole, and their written statement kills me. Like, I, I can't get through this oh, without yeah. laughing, so bear yeah. with me. It says, this term does not honor, but rather disparages Indian people. Indian people. Not Are Native you kidding Americans. me? How does, your, how does your statement now, insult Native Americans by calling them Indian people? Now, and, yeah, now, and to, to branch off this, oh my, my grandfather... God. On my father's side is half Indian. My great-grandmother was a full-blooded Indian. My dad has a card in his wallet that says he's a card-carrying Indian. We don't care. We love it. We're the fact that we, we love the fact that people are honoring us as Native Americans. But my biggest issue is with you, Bob Costas. Yes, I'm talking to you, Bob Costas of NBC. I know you're never going to hear this. Shots fired. So this is perfect. This is perfect right now. How dare you say that a team's name is an insult and a racial slur during their game. How do you do this? When you're getting paid to call that game, you should not, I repeat, not inject any sort of political values that you have in the middle of a football game. We don't care. People want to escape politics. Politics are stressful. They want to escape stress. How do they escape stress? They watch football. They watch people beat the crap out of each other because they can't do it themselves. Don't do that, Bob Costas. How dare you? America is getting soft. Joe, you, your you. thoughts? To cool things down a bit, I'm going to give a shout out to V8 Energy, <laughs> which I have used as my caffeine for the past two weeks, and it's absolutely fantastic. I recommend everybody yeah, to try. We're going to have to cover that label up next week. Um, <laughs> the only thing I'm going to say about it is this: is that this isn't a, this isn't a football issue. This is a cultural issue. And if you want to change the Washington Redskins name, then you also have to call in the Atlanta Braves, the Cleveland Indians, every high school that uses Redskins as a mascot, et cetera, et cetera. Or Braves. Et cetera. Exactly. They've, already, they've done that here, actually. The town over from you, the Kansas Steel Redskins, has been their thing forever, and they're like making them change that now. People and what about the Kansas City yeah. Chiefs? The Kansas, Kansas City, City Chiefs, Chiefs is another too. one, yep. Yeah. All right, Joe, continue. Only... Let, let's let Joe continue. Lancaster Redskins it, up here in western New York has also given some consideration to it, although I don't know exactly what's happening there. It's a couple suburbs over from me. But, you know, honestly, that's all I want to say. I think, you know, it's a cultural thing. And, you know, if they decide that it's something that wants to be changed, great. If not, 
there's a great tradition of football with the Washington Redskins, and I say that you know they should keep that in mind. Final point on this: John Riggins, Super Bowl winning running back, John Riggins was a card carrying Indian. Where was this when John Riggins was carrying the rock for you? I don't remember hearing or reading anything about that. All right, so I think we got our final thoughts on that. This was a good show. I want to encourage everybody to, uh, you know, if you're watching this show, just subscribe to us. Leave us some comments. I mean, we'll, I, I check back, you know, uh, daily almost to, to see if there's any comments, and I'll interact with you. You can uh, find Joe's work, Michael's work, my work, oh, yeah. everybody in the, the SK Network's work over at www.sports-kings.com. And we love uh, followers. And we do love followers. There's the logo. Hey, and if you guys want to follow me since I'm doing this on the great, wonderful iPhone, at DC's Mikey P, hit me up, follow, see what kind of Atlantis stuff I'm going to say next. DC's and Mikey P, when's the rap album his... dropping? <laughs> oh, dude, it's, it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, that's why I got this full-time job. I'm raising money to get in the studio. And actually, you can I'm also with Cody. find... I'm working with Cody on this one, so oh, we're going to collab on a mixtape. Shout out you to can Cody also find... right now. You can also find Michael on the big screen, although his stage name is Josh Hartnett, and he doesn't really have much of a career anymore. But you can find us on Twitter no, hey, hey. at Real Sports Kings, and you can find us on Facebook at Sports Dash Kings. Search it, give us a like. Like I said, the same thing that goes with the Facebook or with the YouTube page. Interact with us. We'll answer you back. Until next time, thank you for watching. Have a great day.